I loved the movie. I feel like there's so much to it. It's a great comedy satire. It has so much meaning to it. So when you're first getting that script, I mean, what was your thoughts of Not Okay? Yeah. So fun fact. Um, so Quinn Shepard, who is the director, is my partner. And so I have been with this project since its genesis. And by that, I mean literally her walking out of the bathroom after taking a shower and going, okay, for the, the, the blind feature, because she got offered a, a blind feature deal with Make Ready where she could write whatever she wanted. She was like, what about a girl who goes on a trip and then there's a terror, or she pretends to go on a trip and then there's a terrorist attack that hits that place and then she pretends she survived the terrorist attack. And I was like, that is insane. You have to write it. <laughs> and so I've gotten to see every single draft of this project from the beginning, including like the first draft and i wonder if quinn will get mad at me for saying this but like in the very first draft like uh danny was best friends with harper and larson and she gave me the first like 60 pages to look at and i was like i just there's just something like harper was always going to be the one to find her out but i was like i just don't know why this girl would do like she seems like she has good friends and stuff and we kind of realized she needed to be friendless you, you know she needed to have this isolation and this desperation to be seen um so getting to see it evolve over i mean she wrote the first draft in 2018 we filmed it in 2021 so you know seeing it evolve for three years was so interesting because there were just all these new layers that were constantly getting added and got sharper and stronger and more and more compelling um and she thankfully never cut harper out of the script so i got to play her i love harper too and it's it's so crazy to imagine a world where harper and danny could be friends i mean they I seem <laughs> i'd love to talk more about harper i mean i feel like she's a character that she has so much depth in her even though she we don't get to explore too much of what she really is all about we just see kind of how she inter mixes with danny's life but can you tell me like what you knew about her going into playing it yeah i mean the fun thing that i really like to do with my characters is i i write character bibles for them and they're like somewhere between 20 to 40 pages depending on how big the role is and so getting to kind of craft my own backstory for harper was really fun that's like one of my favorite parts of portraying roles is kind of fleshing them out into full people because i think what's so interesting about the film is like you know everything is through danny's eyes until it's not and that's very intentional um and so being able to like i came up with this thing where i was like harper was promised the like 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 there was somebody who was going to be like retiring or leaving and susan was like that that office that private office is yours next so it's like i was like that's my added layer of motivation for how dare danny take my office but yeah i mean i i think that her intelligence and her tenacity but also the fact that she is a moral person at the end of the day you know that was something i was really adamant with quinn in some of the rewrites you know there was a moment where she asked me she was like what if you know, would Danny ever really actually come clean on her own? What if Harper just outs her? And I was like, no, that is not Harper. That is because we were like, I mean, we were pretty close from maybe a month or two out from, from shooting. And I was like, no, Harper, like that is her core person at the end of the day. She's still going to give Danny that, that chance, you know, that is her moral center. And so I think that's what I responded to so much. She doesn't really have the same connection with social media that Danny does. So I wanted to ask in your personal experience, what is your relationship with social media? I think similar to Harper's, I'm, I'm not really that into it. You know, I probably spend, I mean, I, I would say I, I go on Instagram every day, but for about four minutes, you know, I like check my DMs. I, you know, like, will like check and like like some friends pictures but it's not you know, i'm i'm really never i don't really tweet anymore i don't really think people should be tweeting and i just don't think that you know thought great thoughts can be distilled down to however many characters they allow not enough you know and i think that so social media is a weird thing to me i i get why we have it um it's certainly good for connecting with people and and talking to you know strangers on the internet uh which didn't our parents tell us not to do that aren't we not supposed to do that stranger danger is really stranger out danger the window is on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's what that's what it is really oh 
the movie covers so much about influencer culture and going into social media, but it also explores other societal issues like terrorism and gun control. So what do you think audiences will take away from seeing a film like this? You know, I think it's really, really well distilled in, in the final scene of the film, which is, you know, without spoiling anything, whose stories get told? Why do we care? specifically about those types of people and people who do exploit and people who do co-op trauma um, and who hurt people, you know, why do we have this obsession with these scammer stories and not so much the, the victims of these people? And I think that watching this film, you really get a sense of, of who gets the last word and why that matters. And I hope that's what people take away from it. When you saw the end scene, because I feel like the ending is is such a powerful moment. I mean, what was your reaction to that, especially since you had been there for the whole storytelling for crafting it? So how, how did you react to when it finally wrapped and you had picked the ending? Yeah, so the interesting thing about the ending, which I can share because I know Zoe and uh, Quinn are talking about it, is that there was actually, there were two alternate endings that um, sort of tried to wrap up Danny a bit more. And so, uh, and there was an even, a, there was a third alternate ending that got nixed when she sold the film. They were like, okay, we love the movie, but not that ending, which was a very, very dark uh, and intense ending that just was not gonna, gonna fly. Um, and so crafting that and, you know, that, that final, that final scene that was always in the script, you know, that was always a big cathartic moment, but realizing that that is actually where the story needs to end was a really interesting challenge for Quinn in the edit. And even when filming, you know, the, the ending was always sort of that stickler point, because what do we do with people like Danny? You know, that, that is a big question and that doesn't have a clean answer. And so I think, what was really fun because it was going through multiple rounds of, of test screenings was when we got the surveys back because a lot of the times we were getting the surveys back and people were like, love the movie, don't love how it ends, like doesn't give me that gut punch. And we're like, how do we do this? How do we do this? And when we had that one and we started getting the surveys back and it was like, how did you feel about the ending? Loved it. My favorite part of the film, even people who didn't like the movie were like, ending was the best part. We were just like, we did it. It felt like we climbed this mountain that we had been trying to tackle for probably a year and a half like from the time it went to searchlight and we knew we needed to change the ending to where it landed and it's just like it's one of those things where you're like of course that was the ending how did we not know but once you see it it's just it's perfect yeah it, it is really great and that it seems like such a dream team to be working with so i'd love to just ask how was it working on set with everyone with your partner and just the experiences you all had oh it was fantastic i mean it you know getting to work with quinn again was, uh, you know, I, I want to work with her for the rest of my career. Um, I think she's, she's always pushing me to be a stronger actor. I think some of my best work is, is at her hands. And Zoe was so committed to the role and such a, you know, she executive, she was an executive producer on the project as well and was so involved in crafting Danny's look, but also just on set being such a supporter of like making sure we made our days all the time and like really getting in the trenches with Quinn and sort of me as well. That was so needed, you know, because with Blame, it was a very small project, a very small crew. And then going into, a, you know, a big studio movie where you have 200 people on set, it was really, really great to have another like young woman who was being so supportive. And the cast was amazing. Everyone was so lovely and hilarious and so much fun to riff with and improv with. Um, Dylan and I had a really great time the, the scene where I, uh, you're Colin, you're from Maine, the improv that we were doing back and forth and coming up with different places that there are lots of white people. I think there's like, I think they might be dropping a, a, an outtake of just all the different, like Connecticut, Idaho, like, um, yeah, it was a great, great experience. I loved being on that set. I definitely can't wait to see the behind the scenes because I'm sure there's there's so much there. I do. So do. definitely. Thank you so much. Thank That's all you. the time I have. But congratulations again. Thank you.